I definitely just realized that I'm wearing the same shirt that I was wearing when I filmed the last couple of videos. That was a week ago. Apparently I wear my clothes in succession of weeks. But anyways, what's not in succession of weeks is what's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name's Carrie and today is a highly requested video. Well, at least highly requested since I posted um, my video about uh, my EDC, my everyday carry, um, where I talk about what I take with me. Um, and I had asked you guys if you wanted to see the pens, my EDC pens when I travel. Um, so they're not my EDC for when I'm just at home um, or just heading up to my cottage because at that point it's basically just like home. It just has to take one, you know, couple hour car ride. So y'all requested it and I'm bringing it. So I have one, two, three, four, five pens that I take with me and then one honorable mention. So in no particular order, uh, and some of these change price points pretty dramatically, <clears throat> um, no particular order. I've done full reviews of all of these, so check out my channel if you want to see details about them. But no particular order, I'm gonna start with a pen that you've all seen a lot, a lot, a lot on my channel. That is the Platinum 3776 fountain pen. Um, this one happens to be the chartreuse, if you want to call it that, uh, with a fine nib. It was the first gold nib that I ever had. Um, I always have this, it's not inked up now currently. Um, actually, I don't think any of these but one are inked up right now. Um, this is the first gold nib I have. I typically always fill this with Diatrementis Cola. Um, no reason in particular other than I did that one time and I've done it ever since because I love it. <laughs> um, I like this because it's a fine nib and it's Japanese fine so it writes a little bit more towards extra fine which typically I don't like but with this I do like it because sometimes when you travel and you're out on the go um, you have to write on some paper that's not always the best for um, fountain pen. So that's why I like to bring this one. Um, I bring it also because um, it's a lightweight pen. So it's not like it's gonna take up any you know real estate. It's a relatively small pen. Um, so it's not gonna take up too much. And I can do longer writing sessions with this um, than I can with a pen I'm about to show you, which is the polar opposite of this. Um, and it is all plastic. So I'm not too worried about it breaking. And if it does, um, because this is one of the basic run-of-the-mill versions of this pen, um, I know that I can replace it relatively easily um, and, again, relatively inexpensive um, because if you're not buying retail, uh, then the pen is not too, too bad. So that is pretty much always in my to-go. I've taken that to Europe. I've taken it to, uh, like, Africa. I've taken it to other parts of Canada. I've taken it many, many places. Um, one that's the polar opposite of that is this chunk along right here. This is the Jinhao 159. Uh, it is the same physical size as the Mont Blanc 149. Uh, it is a beast of a pen. So it is solid metal. It's very big and it's very heavy. <laughs> but I feel like you could probably run your car over this. Um, and it would be just fine. Brian Goulet has a fetish apparently about driving his car over, uh, over pens. He's done it twice now. So Brian, if you're watching, if anyone knows, try it with this one. I'm curious. Cause I feel like this could withstand anything you throw at it. Uh, it is just a beast of a pen. And the reason why I like to bring this one with me is because I know it's not going to break. Um, every once in a while I want a beefy pen um, and I actually have the Goulet medium nib in here which writes a little bit more like a broad um, and because I can completely disassemble this one I like to use like shimmering inks in this or inks with strange properties um, which is why I bring this with me because sometimes uh, um, on my travels um, I will come across um, random like pen shops um, and I like to try like experimental inks and I don't really want to put that into anything, you know, that I'd be worried about corroding or whatever. I have zero worries about this. I mean, I could chuck it across a football field. Not that I could throw that far. Um, and I just, this is going to sound bad to say this, but I don't care about this pen. I really don't. <laughs> so that's why I take it with me. Um, cause if anything happens to it, I just don't care. One pen though that I do care if something happens to 
is this guy. This is the Lamy 2000 um, in you know the Macrolon version. The reason why I bring this is because it's a piston fill and I have one more piston fill so that I don't have to worry about taking ink with me um, too much because it will um, last a lot longer than these two pens which go through ink relatively quickly. Um, so this is a piston fill so I don't have to worry about that. It holds a pretty good amount of ink. Um, this is just one of my favorite pens and that's why I take it with me. The body itself, like the pen itself, is very solid. I don't worry about it breaking. Um, so that's why I take it with me traveling. I watch it a little bit more only because I don't want it to get stolen because I do love the pen. Um, but the regular version, as far as like pens go, it's expensive but not expensive, if that makes any sense. Um, so I could replace it but I just, I don't want to because <laughs> I've had this so for so long now um, and I just love it so much. But because it's perfect, it's sleek, you can take it anywhere. If you heard that, that was my laundry beeping. Um, it writes amazing, this is a medium nib um, and just there's not really anything about it that I don't like and it's actually, well, no, it's, it's the two, um, two pens out of the five that I have that's a snap cap. Um, so it's really quick and easy um, to use. This pen might surprise you that I'm about to show you because if you watched my channel for a long time, you know that I actually don't like these pens. That is Twisby. I really don't like Twisby pens. I know some of you are cults, like followings. I know like Rachel Goulet, for example, ride or die by Twisby. And I can understand why people would love them. They are well built. Um, you know, they, they write, they're functional. Um, they're really uh, great price points for a lot of people, especially to get a piston. I love the fact that you can completely take them all apart. But for me, I just don't like the way that they write. Uh, all of their nibs are rock hard, which I don't like, and all of their nibs, for whatever reason except for this in like particular one, are dry in my opinion. I like very wet writers. I realize that you can fix it, but at this point in my fountain pen career, I don't want to invest any time in that. So I don't really like Twisby. But this one, for whatever reason, this original Twisby Eco, um, is the exception that proves the rule. <laughs> so I own and have tried pretty much all of Twisby's pens and have sold them all because I just don't like them. But this one I've kept and I just, I actually quite like this pen. Uh, it's wet -er, uh, again, much like the Jinhao 159. Um, I don't really care about this pen. So again, if it gets broken, Meh, whatever. Um, I can completely disassemble it, so if I have a funky ink, doesn't really matter. Um, and it writes okay. This is a, a medium nib. Again, in the scheme of every pen that I own, it's still not the best, but for Twisby, it, it's pretty decent. Um, and I just, I don't worry about this pen at all. Uh, and it's not super expensive either, so that's really nice to carry. And then lastly, uh, is the Pilot Varsity fountain pen. So this one's a preloaded one. Uh, I usually take a couple of these with me um, because that way, if for whatever reason I run out of ink in all of my other pens, which to be honest is rare, um, I know I have a couple of Varsities kicking around that are always preloaded with ink. Um, these guys are super cheap. You can get them pretty much anywhere. Uh, and I mean, pfft you know, <laughs> you can just do whatever you want with them. And it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I pretty much always, always, always have one of these with me. So these guys are pretty much my EDCs for when I travel. Um, the Lamy 2000 is probably the one that I watch the most just because I don't want to lose it. Then the Platinum 3776. Um, only because it's got a teeny bit of sentimental value. The other three I don't really care about. <laughs> and it sounds so bad to say. It sounds like I, I'm not grateful that I can own them because I, I understand that like, you know, these might be some pens that people are striving to get and I understand that. Um, but in the grand scheme of everything that I have, uh, I'm privileged enough to 
have, you know, the finer things. Um, so yeah, those are my top five. I do have an honorable mention. It is not a fountain pen, but it is the Retro 51. Um, this one happens to be the Holiday Cheer, which was a, a popper that came up. Um, so the reason why I like to bring this around is because it's a roller ball, so it's smoother than, um, you know, just like a regular ballpoint. Um, but every once in a while, there's just, there's just that moment when a fountain pen, blessed soul, is not the right pen to use. And that is when this guy is ready to be busted out. So this I also bring with me. Um, this is what I use, you know, when I'm sitting in the airplane filling out them custom forms. Because <laughs> um, a fountain pen just ain't gonna work on that thing. So, honorable mention, I pretty much always have this guy with me. And this one I pretty much always have with me when I even like go to work, for example. So those are my EDCs when I travel. I'm curious to know, what are yours? Um, you know, and when I say travel, I don't mean again, like just get in a car, do a quick trip somewhere and then stay there for a while. I mean like basically like a backpack almost thing. Um, when you're gonna be taking that plate, that pen everywhere, a little rough and tumble. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hit that like button if you did. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see new videos every Monday and Friday with the occasional Q&A on my Penjin chat Tuesdays and Thursdays. And guys, as always, I love ya and I'll see you next time. Bye.